For me, as an artist, when I start any project, it really comes from prayer. And prayer just like as an acknowledgement of the energies and the relatives around me. So I start usually my day by rolling up sage and just cleansing the air around me or the energies and just puts me in a mind frame to be able to think clearly. In Dakota, there's a, a word called si chum, which is the spiritual essence or the essence of whatever you do. And we believe that that essence is embedded into the work that you make. Full name is Tachachpi Tokaha Inkpamani. Um, that Tachachpi Tokaha, um, there's not a great uh, Dakota to English translation, but it really gets to the point of thinks before he does or thinks first. And then the second part, Inkpamani. Um, Inkpa literally means like the pointer, tip of something, and Mani means to walk, but it's getting at he walks with an arrow. Um, and that kind of means that. I walk with the ability to provide, you know, an arrow could represent like going hunting and providing for your family, but it can also represent defending. My mom is Aztec, or we call it Mexica. Originally, we came from Tinochtitlan in Mexico, in Mexico City. Eventually, we ended up in northern Mexico, and eventually it became part of the United States. So from the 1500s up until World War II, our family was living in Arizona. And in World War II, the United States government had the internment camps or the concentration camps for the Asian Americans or the Japanese. Somehow our family was kind of rounded up into the mix. And so we were relocated or exiled from the United States and we were placed in Jalisco, Mexico at a place called Palo Statotlian. I'm pretty proud of, of, of my lineage from that side because they were, they were doing some pretty cool things. They had long hair, they were practicing ceremonies in a time that all of those things were outlawed in the United States and in Mexico. Um, those were very looked down upon. But my family has kind of a history of, we've always continued on our traditions. So I grew up in Wheaton, but I also grew up in Sisseton, South Dakota, on Lake Travers. And my dad was from Sisseton. He raised us to be Dakota. That's where the native culture of here in South Dakota and Minnesota really started to take, take on more of a precedence in my life. We'd go to powwows, we'd go to sweat, we'd go to ceremonies. And yeah, everybody on my dad's side really just encouraged us to continue learning. And I really embraced it of, you know, the, the things that I make, being able to learn and speak Dakota now, that's really what I, what I want. And now having a baby, that's what I want to carry on. So my partner is um, from Standing Rock, she's Standing Rock Sioux. So yeah, those are the things that we want for our kids, is that to learn the Dakota way of life. Uh, so this is a choke cherry pounder, and it's probably one of my favorite artifacts or cultural pieces that I own. One of the reasons for that is that it always reminds me of where people were, the types of things that they were using at the time. And this would have been like primarily a woman's tool where they would have constantly pounded choke cherries and buffalo meat, roots. It's a tool that lets me know and reminds me of like the hard work that they, that they did at the time. And you know, just taking care of the family, you know, these are the tools that are required for it. And in my artwork, that's one of the things I'm always trying to remember is, who are the people that I'm depicting? Why am I depicting them? Um, what are the stories that are being remembered and shared uh, with the things that I use? Historically, this whole region has been actively used for over 8,000 years. So that's like the, the human remains that has been found is about 8,000 years, and that was the Browns Valley Man. And on Lake Travers, there's dozens of, or there used to be dozens of burial mounds. There's a story about a farmer I was talking to that talked about that in Browns Valley, a farmer had found a skull that was peeking above the earth, and um, somebody had told him, we'll just plow it under. 
so they did that, and that, that's a pretty common story of a lot of the burial mounds around here. So I'd like to say that Dakota people within Wheaton, Minnesota, and South Dakota have been here for over 20,000, maybe 40,000 years that we know of, just the way that our stories line up with, with the stars and different formation talking about like the woolly mammoths and a time even before the woolly mammoth had come. I believe that we've been here considerably longer than people believe or even know. Ledger art is a Plains Indian style of drawing and it comes from a tradition of Plains Indian um, pictographic drawings which were men's exploits they call it. So men would put on their war shirts or on their teepee their, their deeds, whether it was, you know, bravery or values that are core to the Dakota people. They would depict those on hides. And eventually, when we were placed onto reservations, you know, it was really hard to come by a buffalo hide or even a deer hide. So they started putting it on paper and the paper that was available was ledgers from the Indian agents and the soldiers that had them available at the forts. So this is a couple things that I typically look for when looking at ledger paper specifically. It's the size, the quality of writing, the darkness of the writing. For some projects, you want the writing to really come forward. And for some things, you want it to um, kind of fade more back. Painting is kind of what I love. Like of all things, if I could do anything in the world, I'd, I'd just be painting every day. It's, it's really so simple, like you just take a flat surface and you're just mixing a little bit of water, a little bit of medium, and basically dirt, and you're just pushing around mud on a canvas and somehow that can transform into a portrait of somebody. Type of paintings that I'm working on now really is on identity and representation. So for a long time Native people were again misrepresented or somebody dictated what the in Native image was. So they posed them, they dictated how they would sit, what they would have on them, and Native people just didn't have the availability to dictate what that image was or what are the stories that are being shared through that image. So my portraits really are trying to make sure that it's Native people of today, just as they are, you don't have to add anything extra for them to be indigenous or to be native. They are just who they are by their own experiences, by their own blood, by their own ancestry. So when I was in high school, one of the things that I told everybody was that someday I'm gonna be in the Smithsonian and I wanted to be better than Michelangelo. Now I've kind of, you know, I've experienced uh, a lot of things and I've, I've learned a lot of different art forms from traditional art forms like quill work, bead work, then there's painting, ledger art, um, storytelling, but I never lost that sight that I wanted to be a sculptor. I wanted to work with stone. And part of that comes from, yeah, I've seen all of these Roman and Renaissance sculptures, but I also grew up learning about the Aztec sculptures of the sun and the moon or the stone carvings from there, or even as far back as the Olmec and their stone carvings. And those have always been in my mind that within my blood, there's a lineage of working with stone. being able to go to the Jeffers petroglyphs and there's a handprint there where when I place my hand it fit perfectly and feeling like I truly belong somewhere that somebody 6,000 years ago placed their handprint there and now I get to be there and touch the same hand is, is pretty amazing to me and that really changed my perspective of how I look at public art, how I look at sculpture and the legacy that I leave behind with my own work. 
So there's a responsibility when working with stone because it's going to outlast me. It's going to you know, live on for multiple generations. Somebody someday is going to be looking at my work and they're going to be asking the same questions I ask of the past. When a people has lasted you know, 40,000 years and continuously done something, if you imagine it as a chain or a rope, I don't want to be the person that stops doing something like that. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies. Mark and Margaret Yakel Juline on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota. On the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota. On the web at lrac4calendar.org. Playing today's new music plus your favorite hits, 96.7 Cram, online at 967cram.com. <laughs>